Sir John Ambrose Fleming FRS was a British electrical engineer and physicist. He is known for inventing the first thermionic valve or vacuum tube. He is also famous for the left-hand rule. He was born the eldest of seven children of James Fleming D.D., a congregational minister, and his wife, Mary Ann, at Lancaster, Lancashire and baptized on of February 1850. He was a devout Christian and preached on one occasion at St. Martin in the Fields in London on the topic of evidence for the resurrection. In 1932, along with Douglas Dewar and Bernard Ackworth, he helped establish the evolution protest movement. Having no children, he bequeathed much of his estate to Christian charities, especially those that helped the poor. He was an accomplished photographer and, in addition, he painted watercolors and enjoyed climbing in the Alps. Early years Ambrose Fleming was born in Lancaster and educated at University College School, London, and University College London. He entered St. John's College, Cambridge in 1877, gaining his B.A. in 1881 and becoming a Fellow of St. John's in 1883. He went on to lecture at several universities, including the University of Cambridge, the University of Nottingham, and University College London, where he was the first professor of electrical engineering. He was also consultant to the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company, Swan Company, Ferranti, Edison Telephone, and later the Edison Electric Light Company. In 1892, Fleming presented an important paper on electrical transformer theory to the Institution of Electrical Engineers in London, Education and Marriages. Fleming started school at about the age of 10, attending a private school where he particularly enjoyed geometry. Prior to that his mother tutored him and he had learned, virtually by heart, a book called The Child's Guide to Knowledge a popular book of the day, even as an adult he would quote from it. His schooling continued at the University College School where, although accomplished at maths, he habitually came bottom of the class at Latin. Even as a boy he wanted to become an engineer. At 11 he had his own workshop where he built model boats and engines. He even built his own camera, the start of a lifelong interest in photography. Training to become an engineer was beyond the family's financial resources, but he reached his goal via a path that alternated education with paid employment. He enrolled for a BSc degree at University College, London, graduated in 1870, and studied under the mathematician Augustus de Morgan and the physicist George Carey Foster. He became a student of chemistry at the Royal College of Science in South Kensington in London. There he first studied Alessandro Volta's battery, which became the subject of his first scientific paper. This was the first paper to be read to the New Physical Society of London and appears on page 1 of volume 1 of their proceedings. Financial problems again forced him to work for a living and in the summer of 1874 he became science master at Cheltenham College, a public school, earning £400 per year. His own scientific research continued and he corresponded with James Clerk Maxwell at Cambridge University. Maxwell's lectures, he admitted, were difficult to follow. Maxwell, he said, often appeared obscure and had a paradoxical and elusive way of speaking. On occasions Fleming was the only student at those lectures. Fleming again graduated, this time with a first-class honours degree in chemistry and physics. He then obtained a DSc from London and served one year at Cambridge University as a demonstrator of mechanical engineering before being appointed as the first professor of physics and mathematics at the University of Nottingham, but he left after less than a year. On the 11th of June 1887 he married Clara Ripley, daughter of Walter Freak Pratt, a solicitor from Bath. On 27 July 1928 he married the popular young singer Olive May Franks, of Bristol, daughter of George Franks, a Cardiff businessman, activities and achievements. After leaving the University of Nottingham in 1882, Fleming took up the post of electrician to the Edison Electrical Light Company, advising on lighting systems and the new Ferranti alternating current systems. 
In 1884 Fleming joined University College London taking up the chair of electrical technology, the first of its kind in England, although this offered great opportunities. He recalls in his autobiography that the only equipment provided to him was a blackboard and piece of chalk. In 1897 the Pender Laboratory was founding at University College. London and Fleming took up the Pender chair after the £5,000 was endowed as a memorial to John Pender, the founder of Cable and Wireless. In 1899 Fleming became scientific advisor to the Marconi Company and soon after began work on the designing the power plant at Poldu in Cornwall to enable the Marconi Company to transmit across the Atlantic. In 1904, he invented the two-electrode vacuum tube rectifier, which he called the oscillation valve, for which he received a patent on 16 November. It was also called a thermionic valve, vacuum diode, kenetron, thermionic tube, or Fleming valve. The Supreme Court of the United States later invalidated the patent because of an improper disclaimer and, additionally, maintained the technology and the patent was known art when filed. This invention is often considered to have been the beginning of electronics, for this was the first vacuum tube. Fleming's diode was used in radio receivers and radars for many decades afterwards, until it was superseded by solid-state electronic technology more than 50 years later. Fleming retired from University College, London in 1927 at the age of 77. He remained active, becoming a committed advocate of the new technology of television which included serving as the second president of the Television Society. In 1906, Leader Forrest of the U.S. added a control grid to the valve to create a vacuum tube RF detector called the Audion, leading Fleming to accuse him of copying his ideas. De Forest's device was shortly refined by him and Edwin H. Armstrong into the first electronic amplifier, a tube called the triode. The triode was vital in the creation of long-distance telephone and radio communications, radars, and early electronic digital computers. The court battle over these patents lasted for many years with victories at different stages for both sides. Fleming also contributed in the fields of photometry, electronics, wireless telegraphy, and electrical measurements. He coined the term power factor to describe the true power flowing in an AC power system. He was knighted in 1929 and died at his home in Sidmouth, Devon in 1945. His contributions to electronic communications and radar were of vital importance in winning World War II. Fleming was awarded the Iron Medal of Honor in 1933 for the conspicuous part he played in introducing physical and engineering principles into the radio art. Note from eulogy at the centenary celebration of the invention of the thermionic valve. One century ago, in November 1904, John Ambrose Fleming FRS, Pender Professor at UCL, filed GB 190,424,850 in Great Britain for a device called the thermionic valve. When inserted together with a galvanometer into a tuned electrical circuit, it could be used as a very sensitive rectifying detector of high-frequency wireless currents, known as radio waves. It was a major step forward in the wireless revolution. In November 1905, he patented the Fleming valve as a rectifying diode and forerunner to the triode valve and many related structures. It can also be considered to be the device that gave birth to modern electronics. In the ensuing years, valves quickly superseded cat's whiskers and were the main device used to create the electronics industry of today. They remained dominant until the transistor took dominance in the early 1970s today. Descendants of the original valve still play an important role in a range of applications. They can be found in the power stages of radio and television transmitters, in musical instrument amplifiers, in some high-end audio amplifiers, as detectors of optical and short wavelength radiation, and in sensitive equipment that must be radiation hard.
In 1941 the London Power Company commemorated Fleming by naming a new 1,555 GRT Coastal Collier SS Ambrose Fleming. On 27 November 2004 a blue plaque presented by the Institute of Physics was unveiled at the Norman Lockyer Observatory, Sidmouth to mark chapter 100 years since the invention of the thermionic radio valve. Lectures. In 1894 and 1917 Ambrose Fleming was invited to deliver the Royal Institution Christmas Lecture on the work of an electric current and our useful servants, magnetism and electricity respectively. Books by Fleming. Electric Lamps and Electric Lighting. A course of four lectures on electric illumination delivered at the Royal Institution of Great Britain 228 pages, OCLC 8202914. The Alternate Current Transformer in Theory and Practice, The Electrician, Printing and Publishing Company, Magnets and Electric Currents E, and F, N, Spawn, A Handbook for the Electrical Laboratory and Testing Room, The Electrician, Printing and publishing company, Waves and Ripples in Water, Air, and Ether Macmillan, The Evidence of Things Not Seen Christian Knowledge Society, London, The Principles of Electric Wave Telegraphy, Longman's Green, London, 671 pages, The Propagation of Electric Currents in Telephone and Telegraph Conductors Constable, 316 pages, an Elementary Manual of Radio Telegraphy and Radio Telephony Longman's Green, London, 340 pages, on the power factor and conductivity of dielectrics when tested with alternating electric currents of telephonic frequency at various temperatures, Gresham, 82 pages, Assen, B0008CJBIC, The Wonders of Wireless Telegraphy, Explained in simple terms for the non-technical reader Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge. The Wireless Telegraphist's Pocket Book of Notes, Formulae and Calculations The Wireless Press. The Thermionic Valve and its Development in Radio Telegraphy and Telephony. 50 Years of Electricity The Wireless Press. Electrons, Electric Waves and Wireless Telephony The Wireless Press. Introduction to Wireless Telegraphy and Telephony Sir Isaac Pittman and Sons Limited, Mercury Arc Rectifiers and Mercury Vapor Lamps London, Pittman, The Electrical Educator, The New Era Publishing Co. Limited, Memories of a Scientific Life Marshall, Morgan and Scott, Evolution or Creation, Marshall Morgan and Scott, 114 pages, Assen. B00089BL7Y Outlines Objections to Darwin Mathematics for Engineers George Nunes Limited